I just want to speak to you on that very promise on that word. Resurrection power. Because he lives, I will thrive. I will make it. I will not fail. I will make it. 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 Why? Because I know him. Religion wants you to know about Jesus, but not know Jesus. Did you understand? There are people who know about a subject, but they don't know the subject itself. People, oh, they say, oh, this guy is my friend. Really? He's your friend. When was the last time you spoke to him? Oh, it's my friend on Facebook. Some people, they got their shoulders up. I've got 4,000 friends. I've got a million followers. None of them know you. Hallelujah. But you see, in the world of fake news, in the world of fakeness, you can live in your own bubble and you think, oh, you are doing well. But you got to understand, everything in life, there will come a time that it will be tested. It will be touched. And when it is touched, you know and will know if it is a real thing or is fake. Resurrection Day did not start on Resurrection Day. It started from Gethsemane. If you are with us on Friday night, we were talking about come to Gethsemane because it was a time of preparation. When Jesus Christ sweated blood he sweated blood and the oil press with the olives the pressing of the olives brought forth the oil and the anointing of the oil fortified him made him ready to face his accusers to face his detractors, to face his enemies. They came to kill him. They came to finish him. They thought that was it. We are going to do away with him. Ladies and gentlemen, the church of Jesus Christ is supposed to build Christians. People who know their God. Not just heard about God and the benefits of God but knowing God in order to know to do the things that God has put in place for us whatever you do you cannot fast forward your growth you know today we have transgender somebody can get up and say say today I don't feel I'm a woman anymore I'm a man God bless you no matter what you say, you are what you are. You can put lipstick, rearrange whatever, your chromosomes, you can never change it. So you see, cosmetics has made people to believe that they can do things at will. No. Cosmetics. How many people know that? Ladies, I'm talking to you. Do you renew your makeup every day or every week? Every day. But your makeup has got nothing to do with who you are. It's just an appearance. But the real you is unchangeable. Hallelujah. You are made in the image and the likeness of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
And when the enemy comes to you, the first thing he wants to do is to steal that image and make you rely on cosmetics. Hallelujah. Do you know so some people, if they don't put makeup on, they don't go out. No, I don't advise that. You have to, be, you have to look nice. But looking nice, that does not mean you cannot do without it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've got to present ourselves as living epistles of God. Because something very, very expensive was given to us. Amen. Let me go back so that I, I, don't, I don't lose what I have to tell you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say because he lives, I will thrive. Hallelujah. To thrive is to grow and to develop well. Listen, to thrive is to grow and to what? Develop well. Now, the word develop is in stages. You develop. You go through stages and you arrive at a place. God wants every Christian, every child of God to thrive. That is to grow and to develop well, to grow vigorously, to flourish, to gain in wealth and possessions and prosper, to progress even through difficulties. That is what God wants. For his people. Because we are the living epistles of God. The world over there will not understand the resurrection. Until they see. The identity of the resurrection. In the life of Christians. Hallelujah. I, pre I preach a message called. Don't tell me. Show me. Hallelujah. Because we all know that talk is cheap. Don't tell me. Show me. If you show me, I will keep quiet. But if you keep telling me and I don't see, uh, there's something wrong. Hallelujah. You say, Jesus has resurrected. The power of God in me. I have power. And the mouse just goes, hey, your whole day is spoiled. Something has, in you hasn't been built yet. You need to come and let us put you in shape. That that mouse is under your foot. I don't care the size of the mouse. In the name of Jesus. Some of them, some of us is a spider. I'm working on the snake one. I haven't yet got, uh, <laughs> I hate snakes with a passion. When I even see them on television, I can't stand them. But all these things, they are under our foot. Come and say, under my foot. Now, why was that? It's because of the resurrection. Remember, from Gethsemane, the power was given. He went to see Pilate. He was beaten. What was put on him, no human being can endure. Amen. But he went through Gethsemane. Then he came through Calvary. Calvary on the cross, he was supposed to be killed instantly. I wasn't killed. He said, I gave up my life. So nobody could kill him. He gave his life. So the guys would say, wow. Wow. This is really a resurrection day. Amen. I'm talking to you. It's really a resurrection day. His. What? Now, go with me to Matthew 28. Let's look at something. Look at the story. And God will give us some light about the truth. Bible says, for you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Matthew chapter 28, we are reading to up to verse number 10. It said, Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to draw, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. 
And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away, rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it, stopped there. He rolled the stone and sat on it. That's a statement. It's a statement. Remember, this was the resurrection. First statement, the angel said, Guys, you have done all your worst from Gethsemane. Now is show time. Hallelujah. What you don't see playing out here is God was making subtle statements. They are so subtle. He ignored everybody. Now, his attention is only on his people. The angel sat on it and then there were guards, people that have been paid money with um, uh, spears and, 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 and swords guarding the place. He ignored all of them. He said, you guys, you've had your time. Now is the turn of my people. Now, go to three. Then he said, his countenance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. Go on. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Go on. But the angel answered and said to the women, forget about this, some, this, this Sipaios here. Forget about them. They don't count. Tell your neighbor the devils don't count now. We are in a new era. No matter how they are number, it does not matter what they have. They don't count. Because now he's coming to deal with you. Hallelujah. They have had their three days when they were huffing and puffing, when they were beating and kicking, spatting and slapping. They've had their day. Hallelujah. God says, hey, no weapon form against you shall prosper. It will be formed. Unfortunately, today Christianity has become kiss me quick. No, it's not. It's a process. God will not allow you to be alive today. If he hasn't got a plan for you. Amen. So he pushed them all off. He said, come on. The angel answered and said to them, to the women, do not be afraid. Because these guys, they can't do nothing. With their weapons, they are gone. Listen. For I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. Come on, go on. He is not here. For he is Oh, you are not. For he is. Hallelujah. Oh, incidentally. Do you know why the girls came? They were following the tradition. They come in to embalm him. They are coming with the spices to do all this thing. But they didn't listen to Jesus. Now listen, everything Jesus was going to do, he has already spoken. You remember some time ago, she was sit- he was sitting in the house, and a woman came with an alabaster oil. He broke the thing, yeah, and then it's the people say it just smeared it on Jesus Christ, and everybody say, oh God, why should they waste such an expensive oil?" And Jesus said, "Ah, oh, guys, leave her alone." She has anointed me for my burial. 
You know, everything that happened about Jesus, he has already spoken it. Are you with me? Now, stay with me because today, I tell you honestly, oh my God, if you know the joy that accompanied the resurrection, when you are rejected, you will accept it. When somebody doesn't even, even like you, you will accept it. When somebody even criticizes you, you will accept it. Because there is a time that only God has appointed. That if you stay close, if you are with him, the time of his impartation of your life will be revealed. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, chill. He's in charge. So all the guys have done all the things they will do. They are coming with their uh, spices. And God said, no, no, no. Girls, I know who you seek. He's risen. As he said. As he said. He said, come, see the place where the Lord laid. Mm. Interesting. Go on. Seven. We are going up to ten, please. And <laughs> go quickly and tell his disciples that he is from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into <coughs> where you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Are you ready for this? Have you noticed that? The angel completely ignored the presence of those people lying there. Now, these are big men. These are big soldiers. They got, they got weapons. But he completely, like they don't exist. God is telling me to tell somebody here, here from my spirit, you are giving too much attention. To a problem that is happening in your life. You see, on this resurrection day, if you hand it to him, I, I, I say, if you will hand it to him, he will solve it. You see, God is a progressive God. I'm not talking about the progressive sense in politics today. No, I'm talking about a God who works going forward. My sister, stop worrying. This is for you. On this resurrection day, God says, I should tell you, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let that request be in the face of God forever. And the peace of God will visit you today on the day of resurrection. God will resurrect you. He will renew you, revive you, and what the enemy meant for evil, he will turn it to good. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Totally, the angel ignored the soldiers. Okay, guys, Jesus said, go, you will meet him in this place appointed. How many people, that, that, that was joy enough, but they haven't seen Jesus yet. So now Jesus is going to give them the word I want to give every person in this house and anybody, anywhere. This word that Jesus spoke. Listen to what he says. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. Hallelujah. And ran to bring his disciples' word. Go on. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. Jesus met them and he said to them, 
Oh, you are so late in your catching up what is going on here. Jesus met them and he said, what? First question. When they were coming to the tomb, were they rejoicing? Were they? So, now, say attitude. attitude. Come and say attitude. attitude. Adjustment. Attitude. You've got to adjust your attitude. Because the attitude you're having right now, you are mourning in a place of rejoicing. You are coming to see a dead body. But God is saying that there is no dead body here. What you are about to see is living and alive. Sharper than any two-edged sword. So what do you do? Throw out your morning gown. And begin to do the moonwalk. Because something has happened. The devils that want you destroyed. Look at them. They are lying on the ground there. They are the example. You see them? They can't move. They are there with fear. They have shields and swords and everything. But yet still, they couldn't move. Because at that time, Jesus Christ has dominated the environment. The environment is dominated by him. And he begins to issue instruction. God is issuing instruction. He says your face is too hard. You can't impress God with your anger. You can't impress God with your anxiety. He said rejoice. He said what? Rejoice. Tell your neighbor, give us a smile. Give us a smile. Your face is too hard. Give us a smile. He is risen. Hallelujah. Some of you, you still, your face is like you are drinking quinine. That's right. That's right. Go and look at you. Who do you want to impress? Not me. Hallelujah. He said, girls, rejoice. You are going to tell them, you are going to tell them that Jesus is risen. Rejoice. You know some of you, because you can't win souls to Jesus. You can't win souls. When they look at you, the level of misery on your face. He you said, if this is what you happy when you become a Christian, uh -uh. hallelujah. But there are some that when people see him, he said, this guy, I don't even know. <laughs> Amen. His bridges are on fire. But when you see him, he, as if he owned the whole world. Now that is what bring what a witness about the Jesus you said. He said, rejoice. Tell your neighbor, rejoice. Rejoice. Now, that is not from me. That was from Jesus. He said to them, rejoice. So, they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. They did what? Worship him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Say amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is not going to do anything new. No. Up until the time that he resurrected, all the message that he has been preaching since the day he was baptized, all the message he has been giving to his disciples, all the experience, you need to know them. Because, listen, oh, eh, the Lord is doing a new thing. No, it must be a new thing for you, but not a new thing to him. Oh, God is doing a new thing. I, I met somebody. He said, you know, I know, I said, uh, Bishop, I know you've talked to me about faith and all these things. But, you know, somebody tell me the Lord is doing a new thing. I said, really? Can you care to tell me what the new thing is? Because if there is any new thing outside of faith, it's fake. Amen. Yeah. These people, they can't respond. Let me try this place. Yeah. If there is any new thing outside of faith, it's fake. Yeah. For the just I shall I live by faith. If you begin to live by anything else, 
Fake news. Fake news. And we all know that fake news, with time, it will be exposed. It will be exposed. Somebody say he's risen. It's a fact. Come on, say he's risen for you. Say he's risen that you will thrive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe where we are, we don't like it. Of course, we don't like it. But I don't know in God's economy, moving forward, where I am. He said, many are the plans of a man. Nevertheless, the purpose of God, that shall stand. Today, I will teach you another prayer that you should be praying. Father God, what do you want for me? I bet most of us will never, never pray that prayer. We take the shopping list and we go to God. Uh, God, now, let's deal with this. I want this. I want that, that, that. Now, you can have plans. Amen? But every plan must be submitted for him, for approval. He said, before I form you, I know you. You know something that God said? That he said, he said, every hair on your head is numbered, not counted. So even those that you have lost, those that went away completely, it has record of them. Do you understand that? Do you understand the gravity of what I've just said? You know, Christianity has made people to only look and search for the hand of God. But not the heart of God. The heart of God creates. The hand of God excites. That is why when Jesus appeared, the first thing he tells you is himself. He says, fear not. Whoa. Be at peace. Whoa. Why? Because these two things, these two things is the sure manifestation of his presence. Faith is being fought from fear or fear is fighting faith. Peace. God says, my peace I live for you because in this world, you will have tribulation. So if these two products are not functioning in your life, you need to ask God why. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say resurrection. Power. Say resurrection. Power. He rose. Therefore, I will thrive. He came alive so that you will live. I say he came alive so that you will live. It's an example. It's a what? Example. It's a look. As I have done it, you can also. As I have done it, you can also. Now, two things happen. Jesus wanted to show us before his own death. There was a guy called Lazarus. Right? Now, Lazarus, we can all relate to him because he went to the same schools like we did, ate the same food, had the same friends. Hallelujah. Drive cars in and out. And there. In fact, um, Lazarus was an ordinary man. He died. And Jesus came and resurrected him for all to see. But we all knew that Lazarus died properly. He really, really died like a hammer. I mean, he died. <laughs> and we buried him. We know where his, um, his, uh, his grave was. We buried him. But now, that was just a trial run. But before Lazarus, I want to take you to something that happened. So that you see that what Jesus is doing here from Matthew 28, 1 to 10, is something that he's already told us about a long time. But you see, sometimes when he was telling this thing, some people were, you know, they were thinking, eh, we are going to the restaurant, we are going to have this, and this, that, that, that. It's a conversation about this. So, you, you can come to church. Preaching is going on, and you are preaching. Uh, when we're from here, we've got to go and do this, do and that. You don't even hear what is going on. Sometimes, we were in the class. Hallelujah. And I'm guilty of that. We'll be in class. The teacher is speaking. 
The teacher is talking. But we do, we have a plan. We are writing love letters to our girlfriends. How many people know what I'm talking about? Amen? Oh, you know, uh, my sister there said, no, you did it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are sitting in the class. And the teacher is talking. All of a sudden, somebody slap you on the says, Hey, remember, your friend is waiting to hear from you. All. So, in today's modern world, the teacher is talking and you switch your phone. I bet you what they are saying in your ears will never go in the same direction. You will never hear. Hallelujah. Now, that was one of the lessons that Jesus actually taught. Nobody heard. Because what was happening was so severe. Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Okay. You know Jesus, he can talk to 5,000 people like he's talking to one man. Jesus never talked to crowd, although there's crowd. He talks to one man. Because even I'm speaking right now, there are people hearing me that will not hear. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But I have prayed that everybody at the sound of my voice will hear what God is saying. Shout a big amen. amen. I say shout a big amen. amen. Now, go to verse 16 to 20. Let's look at this discourse. Because in between, yeah, in between verse 10 to verse 15, it was all about, you know, the guys that were lying on the ground there. Jesus completely ignored them. And then they run. They want to tell the people, hey, governors, this Jesus day, an angel came, sat on the this thing. The guy is still standing there. He's not even talking to us. He said, really? Hey, listen, don't tell anybody that angel came and rolled a stone. They give them money. Still, God did not give any attention to them. So I'm not going to give any attention to them. Amen. Go to verse number 16. Everybody look at it. Then the 11 disciples went away into what? Galilee. To the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they Worship him. But look at it. But some doubted. Stop. But some doubted. I'm going to have a little bit of fun. This is just gospel according to Louis. Do you know who doubted? Do you know the people who doubted? The ones that were not paying attention when the lessons were going on. The ones that when the teaching was going on, they were. Hello. They are in the church. Oh. They are in the church. They, they sit in church and their mind cannot hold two things at the same time. That is why when Jesus was teaching, he said, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Some doubted. These are disciples. Oh. <laughs> These are what? Disciples. These are the, the biggest. The people who everybody, oh, right, this is the disciple of Jesus. If a disciple... <laughs> can doubt what chance have I got <laughs> are you learning something yes, I'm not wasting your time am I no. are you sure yes. amen? amen it gets better 
That's why I like Jesus. But then, he knew that some doubted, yeah? But listen to what he says. Ignore everything, he said. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority. He said what? All authority. Slap somebody, say all. all. No, 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 you are not. You don't. Now slap them, he said all. all. Okay, now let us define what he means by that. Because you see, sometimes we think we understand something. But what does it mean that all authority have been given to me? What does it mean? Authority does not come with seeing. Authority is in the realm of the spirit. He said, behold, I give you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. And he said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, wait. He didn't go into his pockets. And he said, this is authority. Take it. So the authority is talking about you can never see it. That's how somebody say attitude. attitude. Come on, say attitude. attitude. Now, attitude is everything. Amen. I learned it very late. So many things have happened to me. I've lost so many things. But I've learned it. Amen. And I'm going to use it. Amen. Attitude. Listen, there are things that it does not matter how big they are. If you face it, you will give away because you are coming with an attitude of authority. When they say, okay, then you are on the floor. No, 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 no. That is not authority. I think that is not authority. Somebody shout authority. authority. The ability to be in charge. He said, all authority has been given to me. First, he said, in heaven and on earth. So where are you living today? On fantastic. So Jesus said, that authority is in his hand. Let's see what he did with it. Go to the next verse. Go therefore and make disciples of all Nations. You know, we use all these things for evangelism, which is truth. But you can't give somebody what you don't have. First of all, he said, I give you. I give you. The person you are going to witness to, the person you are going to talk to, do you believe? I said, do you believe that they will change? You don't have to change them. But you carry a message of authority. You deliver it. And you walk away. Yes. Hallelujah. And you leave God, the Holy Spirit, to do the work. Now listen, it gets better. He said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look at 20. He said, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Which things? Today's resurrection day. So I'm going to give you succinctly what Jesus was talking about on resurrection day to his disciples. He said, Command, I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. I am with you. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I, I can't feel you. I can't feel He said, hey, 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 I'm here. I didn't move. Have you, have you seen people say, I, I don't feel Jesus. I don't feel Jesus. I said, ah, come closer. Because he never moved. I said, Jesus, never move. If you are feeling far away, it's not him. It's you who have moved. If you go closer, you begin to feel him. He said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The end of the age has come? No. But Jesus said, teaching them to what? Observe 
all that I've, come, I've told you. Go with me to John chapter 11. Listen to this thing. John chapter 11. Go and have fun here. Verse 25 and 26. This is our own auntie, Martha. We can relate, yeah? We can relate. Good. Now listen to what he says. No, go to 24 first. 24. 24. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection. That is Lazarus. Okay? At the what? Last day. So, he's looking at a future date. He's looking at what? A future date. But Jesus was trying to say, no, 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 no. 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 You are looking at the embodiment of resurrection. Although I'm going to demonstrate it for you through Lazarus, Lazarus will still die. Yeah? But you are looking at the resurrection through the person talking to you. So listen to what Jesus said in 25. He said, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Tell your neighbor, I'm undiable. Say, I, I, I'm undiable. You can't kill me. Now listen to this. There's two deaths. I hope you know that. You see, this body we have, we will definitely have to leave it because it will decay. But the real us that will never die is the spirit of God that we carry. Some people's spirit will die because it's not resurrected, rejuvenated by the spirit of Christ. But if you are experiencing resurrection experience today, it's because your spirit has been made alive. You are not dead. You are alive. You are not dead. You are alive. Come on. I said what? You are not but you are alive. How do you know you are alive? How do you know? Praise the Lord. You will know that you are alive by your testimony. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Some of us even call Christians, we go to church, but our words alone gives us our way as dead people. Because the world has taken over us. Everything is about what the world says. Because our churches have been a place where people come to get excited. They don't get the word of God. They don't get to build their faith. They came to build their expectations. Praise the Lord. Say I'm alive. Come on, say Jesus said I am alive. Therefore, I am alive. Slap somebody. Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you see me? I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Why are you alive? You are only alive for him to show his glory through your life. That when people see you, they are able to say, oh, there's something about that lady. Uh, there's something about that lady. He said, oh, sister, I see you always with this joy. Say, ah, it's because of Christ. You will win a soul much quicker than you getting a bunch of scriptures, quoting scriptures you don't even understand. Because your attitude alone opens you to the resurrection life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. And he who <coughs> believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. 26. And whoever lives and believes 
in me shall never die. Do you believe it? I'm asking a question. Do you believe it? She didn't believe it. Do, do you know what Jesus just said? He said, you will never die. Amen. You wouldn't die. Then, then somebody said, ah, but we know this person. He's dead. I know my mother is dead. So what do you mean by I won't die? My father, my grandfather, everybody died. What do you mean by I don't die? I won't die. Because, you see, death to a Christian is different to death of the unbeliever. A Christian never dies. A Christian transitions. You just drop your coats and you continue. Hallelujah. Because he lives, we will live. Resurrection gave us, gave us the assurance that hey, the grave is not our final destination. No, the grave is for this carcass, this body. But we are destined to send eternity with God. You know, by your face alone, I know you don't believe that. You are finding it hard to believe. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, because I live, you will live. Because you are my disciples. You are going to testify about me. You are going to tell people of the good things that Jesus Christ has done for the whole world. Through you, I will have disciples. It didn't say church members. So today we have two categories of Christians. We have the disciples and we have the church members. Church members take their membership everywhere in the world, anywhere they want. And disciples, they are stuck with Jesus. They have no alternative. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. We have more church members today than disciples. I pray that this is not in this congregation. Praise the Lord. Now, Jesus wanted to make disciples. He has about 170 people. He look at them and say, let's see where this crowd are. And he says something. Anybody who don't eat my, my body or drink my blood has got nothing in me. Say, ah, this guy is Dracula. This guy, he's weird. He's asking us to do something that is not, it's not, it's not feasible. He said, if you don't drink my blood and eat my body, what is he talking about? If you don't go through the suffering, identify with the cross, you have no life in me. Uh, the guy said, no, no, no. We can't take this. Have you seen our uh, churches today? Nobody get rebuked. If, if I'm saying something, I'm preaching right now, if I make any care to somebody's problem, they get angry. Because there's another church in the next door is going to go there. Now, those are members. They take their membership wherever. But the disciples... They take chastisement because God loves them. Amen. So Jesus said, if you don't drink my blood, you are not part of me. Uh, one, 170 people, they all walked out. They said, we can't walk with you again. But then at the background there, there were one guy standing there and his, his, his friends behind him. And he said, uh, hey, guys, are you also going to go? And Peter said, uh, where can we go? Now, those are disciples. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Where can we go? It's only you has the word of God. Now, it didn't say only you have the magic. It's only you who have the blessings. Wow. 
It's only you who can make me laugh. It's only you who can make me excited. Today, our pulpit is full of comedians, magicians, because that is what we want to see. Jesus didn't involve himself in any of these. But he said, ah, are you going to go? Bye-bye. But he said, no, God. Those 150, whatever, they can go. But we, we know that you have the word of God. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, they became disciples. They became apostles. And the whole world was built on them. May God build on you. May God cause you to touch your world. May they see the goodness of God in you and people begin to follow. May they ask, where is your God? Amen. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Now, go with me to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. I just want to give this thing to you. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. Listen to what Jesus said. 1 John, not the book of John. 1 John 5, 11. Okay, to 14. And this is the testimony. Somebody say testimony. Oh, you are not saying this. Come on, say, say testimony. Say I testify. Come on, say I testify. By confidence, I am a child of God. Resurrected to thrive. He said, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal Life. And this life is in his son. Ooh, this is a mighty statement. Big statement. He said this life is not in religion. This life is in the person of Jesus Christ. And if Christ is in you, the hope. Today maybe you can't see everything. But I tell you honestly. As I work. As I follow. As I am with him. He beautifies me. Because I will thrive. In the resurrection. It gets better. Come on go on to 12. He said he who has the son. Has life. Oh. He who does not have the son. Of God. Does not have life. He is a walking dead. You, you know zombies. They are dead but they are walking. Hallelujah. Because. They have no life. What they have is a counterfeit life. Hallelujah. Go to 13. He said. This thing I have written to you. Who believe in the name of the Son of God. That you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. What is his name? Jesus. I say, what is his name? Jesus. Look at 14. Now. This is this is I can't give you confidence. I cannot give you confidence. The confidence is what is given by Christ. This is the confidence that we have in him. You know, some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we remember the name of our Lord, our God. He went on to say, those people will be brought down. They will fall. But we will arise and stand. Upright, which means eternal. Amen. Going forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Going 
in the name of Jesus. He said, that we, okay, let's start again. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his, he hears us. Let's go back. Let's rewind the tape as I finish. When I started, I asked you a question. Have you ever gone to God and asked him, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Not all the time going with your shopping list. But you can go with shopping lists. It's also, uh, you know, God loves us. But he said, you have so many plans. But my plans for you will stand. Amen. Hallelujah. My plans for you will stand. I want to pray for somebody that feels delayed, that feels so far from God. Somebody that said, today I am up, tomorrow I'm down. The enemy is playing tennis with me. Pa, 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 pa. The rally. God is saying something today. He said, Be still and know that I am God. A heart that is not settled is a heart that is agitated. The resurrection of Jesus Christ cemented the confidence that we have. He said, now, this is the confidence that we have in 